Steve, Brag, you're here now, right? Okay. Uh, before Steve comes up, I just want to do one thing. Uh, last year there wasn't an APRS forum because I was told there wasn't enough interest. So I want to document this forum, so I'm going to take your picture as Steve comes up. So your count is 200 plus in the room, sir. 200 plus. Plus the ones that gave up and left because they couldn't get a seat. And since you started early, some of it earlier. That's a neat little one. We're talking about Ham Hud. Ham Hud is a true community effort. in the light. Good morning. I'm Steve Bragg. This is Jason Rogers. We're going to talk about Ham Hud this morning. Ham Hud's a true community effort. So Jason's going to talk a little bit about uh, what he's been doing with it, and I'm going to talk about what I've been doing with it. So here's Jason. You guys didn't, get, didn't think you'd get to see me twice, did you? I'm just going to go over a quick little bit of an uh, overview, and then Steve's going to actually go into some of the new stuff. We're, we'll try to do this quick for you here. Um, the HAMLUD, for those of you who don't know what it is, it's a heads-up APRS display. Uh, works with uh, pretty much any standard NMEA uh, GPS that can output 40 hairbot uh, serial data. Uh, works with any Tapper 2 clone type TNC, so it includes your Cantronics, your AEAs, your PACCONs. Uh, we've used it with lots of flavors of TNCs we haven't worked in. Um, it also works with the D7 and the D700 now. We, uh, we add 9600 baht serial uh, support. Um, there's a couple of things you got to do there uh, extra, but it works with it. Uh, the kits have always been a homebrew type of project. Uh, we, um, it started off pretty much as a, as a bare board. You grab the parts and you put it together. Then we got to the part where it, it was uh, the partial kits. Um, in fact, James over here, he helped us with the partial kits. And um, then we moved into a full kitting last year. And we went through uh, several kittings of that. It's open source, which is a big point, so it's always open for modification for anybody who feels like they want to tackle the code, add to it, completely rewrite it, it's up to you. Um, the HamHud one was the uh, was the original device. It was a PIC 16C73, it was a 4K, 16x2 LCD, and it had no user interface. It was basically just a display. We eventually moved into the HamHud 2, which was uh, started about 99. We incorporated smart beating, which many of you I'm sure know of, uh, because of the tying track and the open track reload um, that all employs smart big thing. Uh, start with the F876 uh, pick, which is 8K. We eventually moved up to the, uh, the F250, 18 F252, 16K, and also we doubled our clock speed up to 40 megs, so we'll run a lot faster. Uh, 2 by 20 LCD, we have a whiz wheel, uh, which is a mechanical encoder with a button. That's kind of how you do the major controls on the unit. And we had three major iterations. Uh, 99 was that kind of first PCB. 2003 was a partial kit with James. And then we did the main actual kitting uh, with the custom Hammond uh, cases in 2006. Um, and let's see, is this me or you? I mean, OK. Um, we're still active. Um, uh, I know it seems like we kind of come and go because, uh, you know, we, we, uh, we, uh, we basically we go through spurts. But we're still here, and uh, we've got a brand new kit run, getting ready to go right now. Uh, we've moved up to the 18F6627. It gives us 48K, two UARTs, and we're still 40 megs. And it will have the internal TNC, which is the big plus compared to the, uh, the uh, previous versions. Um, we've got about 400 that we can pretty much account for, for the most part, worldwide. Uh, 150 kits sold just last year, so we've gone through quite a few. We have a users group, and if anybody's interested, it's on Yahoo. Uh, just go there and uh, join the group. We'd uh, be more than glad to have you there, uh, part of the discussion. Give us you know, tips, anything that you'd like to see. We've got a future list uh, 
as long as my arm, but that's okay. We're, we're working on it. And we've got almost 600 members on that group, so it's a pretty wide range of guys there. And uh, I'll go ahead and turn this over to Steve here. Thanks, Jason. Back in 1998, when I first started playing around with, with Ham Hut and trying to design something to have the mobile APRS in my car, remember this was back before the Kenwoods uh, D700s and D7As came out. So I started out uh, thinking of the concept of just total ham awareness in your, mo in your mobile station, seeing where other stations were with respect to you, uh, and, and seeing the, the total environment. I think Bob Berdenga has it. Has, I talked about this a lot on the SIG lately. Of, of the idea of total. Okay, sorry about that. My voice is going for two days of talking at the booth. <clears throat> so the that concept of total ham awareness and the idea of that in, in mobile station that you see all the stations around you. Well, Hamlet Two did, did a pretty good job of of doing that, but we want to do more. We want to see more. We want to be able to display more. We want to be able to encapsulate more information in an easy to read and easy to see way. You keep your heads up and see it and drive or, or ride and, and be safe. So our future product, one we're going to bring out this fall, is Hamhut V. Uh, I know five is Roman numeral and is fifth in the series, but V is for video. We're, we're generating uh, NTSC video and uh, I think you saw a shot of that uh, on, the, on this first screen, lower left there. You can come by our booth and see our demo unit. It's in the back there on the cart as well. Um, over there on the right hand side is, uh, on the lower right, is our uh, demo unit. Uh, it's, we use a Spartan 3 FPGA. Let me go back to that other slide now. Um, the idea here is ham radio systems on a chip. And I wrote a little paper for the packet status register. Uh, about this, and you can you can pick that up and read it. The idea is that hams need to be able to modify their equipment. Hey, we're hams. Where it's it's about um, learning and, and improving the radio state of the art. Lately, it seems like you can't modify anything with all the surface mount stuff, right? Well, we need to, we need to get into it another way so we can make our modifications, and that way is FPGAs. That way, you can change the hardware by changing code on your computer. And you can reconfigure it any way you want to. With Hamhub V, we have two processors in there that are actually soft processors. They're not, they're not actual processors. They're, they're inside the FPGA. You can modify that any way you want to. Uh, just to keep this short, um, we've got a lot of capability that we're, that we're planning. And uh, we have a lot of capability that we're planning. And you can come see some of that down at our booth at 505. Um, one of the interesting things is that you can make any mods you want with the FPGA. Um, the guy that works with me on the on firmware, Dale, KG5LT, called me up the other day and said, you know, I need another UART to debug for a debug outfit. I said, you got it. I went and changed a few lines of code and bingo, you got an export of UART. That's something you can't do with a regular microprocessor like a pick. So, we have lots of interfaces and you can come by and, and talk to us about those. We've shown the demo board. We're planning on releasing the uh, kits at, at DCC in, uh, this fall, and the idea is we'll include a rearview mirror type LCD display, just because every regular rearview mirror provides a heads-up display. Uh, the planned price of the kit is $497. Uh, thank you.